So I'm Miller, bought a-hole here, and I'm not gonna lie, the main reason I wanted this video today is because I wanted to try out the night mode on this camera I bought a while back. I was like, of course it gets really dark earlier in the winter, obviously. It looks pretty good, like it's pitch black out here. And admittedly, now it kind of look, now I look a bit like a burglar, because I put my hood up because it's also cold, and now, <laughs> now walking through the dark. So it's officially the weirdest video we've ever done. But look, I'm a pretty weird dude, so at least I'm tying it into my gimmick. I think we're also gonna lose focus a lot, but that's okay. Because the main reason I wanted to talk today is I'm doing my walk a bit later than usual, hence the light. Make sure you get your 10,000 steps in. But that also kind of ties in to when people go on their cuts, which, you know, a lot of people are now thinking about doing. Uh, you know, you get to January and April, or April to June always seems to be competition season. Not that we need to worry about that. But the point is, people get through Christmas, they've been bulking through the winter, the winter months. I mean, they, they want to get ripped for the summer, essentially. So. January, February, March is a good time to do it. And as always, I'm very privileged, very lucky that people get in touch with me on my Instagram at Simon316 and they say, it's really, it could be, I wanna say it's the number one question, but I think it's the most consistent question. And that is, Simon, I'm gonna start my cut, you know, I'm going into a calorie deficit, you know, should I also change up my training so that, you know, rather than do my, I don't know, my six to eight reps, my eight to 10 reps, should I start going lighter weight and doing higher reps. Now this is a stereotype that's been around in bodybuilding and fitness for years. You know, it was always, if you want to get big, you lift strong and you do four to six reps. And if you want to get ripped, you do 12 to 14 reps, whatever the hell it may be. Man, we are absolutely covered in darkness now. And I suppose that probably came from the fact that you always want to, not always, but you know, eventually you want to change up your routine here and there to keep your body guessing. But I fundamentally think if you are about to enter a calorie deficit and you're about to get ripped and you're about to change up your diet, the last thing you want to do is change up your training. I think that's crazy. I think that makes you a crazy person. And the reason is this, it's a simple anecdote, it's a simple analogy, it's a simple metaphor, mostly because I don't know which category it absolutely fits into. Let's say, I swear we've talked about this before, but I don't care, I want to make a single video about it so I've got it that I can send people when they ask me. Let's say you bench 100 kilograms, right? You're smashing it, well done, 100 kilograms. And you've been adding on 2.5 here, 2.5 there, and you always want to do progressive, you always want to aim for progressive overload, is my point. Doesn't matter what you're doing, because you can actually build muscle in a calorific deficit, I'm not going to talk about it today, it's a different argument for a, a different video. But a great way, a great barometer, a great piece of evidence to know that you are tapping into fat as opposed to muscle, which is always difficult when you drop your calories down, is to ensure you keep that bench press at 100 kilograms, let's say for eight reps. That's what you've been doing for the last while. Again, you've been adding little bits of weight here and there. If you get six, eight, 12 weeks into your cut and you've dropped weight and you think, and you're a bit worried, oh, you know, am I, you know, am I accidentally tapping into my muscle instead of my fat, but you are still benching 100 kilograms for those O reps. Well, that's a great way to say, well, maybe I haven't, or at least I haven't lost my strength. And it's not like an exact science, but usually if you don't lose your strengths, you haven't lost that much muscle. And that's why it's just, it's just so dang <laughs> dangerous is a bit much. You're not playing with explosive. You're not a bomb expert, but it's just not the thing to do. Like it's not the thing to do. It's, you know, there, there is an absolute time to maybe do a high rep program for a while or I mean we did that Ryan Humiston video on here which was essentially all high reps and crazy crazy intensity but you don't you just you're just asking for trouble as far as I'm concerned so don't do it simple as that don't do it keep your strength up keep your training up and also why keep it 100 kilograms let's say you get you know eight weeks down the road why not try to get to 105 kilograms and maybe you're only benching it for six seven reps but you've only lost a rep and you're now benching five kilograms more which means you're stronger than you were i think too many times we do fall into these myths i suppose that have been perpetuated back in the day and that's not to say that it may not work for you but do not think just because you're changing your diet means you have to change your training program do not do it if you get a few weeks down the line and you really don't think you're seeing any changes which is another good reason why you should have a personal trainer because they can say stay the course stay the course then maybe it may worth be trying but i certainly wouldn't do it i certainly wouldn't do it i would always err on the side of caution and i would always take my time with these things remember none of this stuff happens overnight because think about it too you're gonna be so disappointed if you do get to the end of your cut or even mid cut and realize that you've lost all that hard earned muscle. And seriously, if you're doing it for a competition, I mean, you probably can do it yourself, but I think especially emotionally towards the end, you go so crazy and you go so potty. It is good to have that third party perspective and understand that personal trainers are really, really expensive, but they are really, really good. And as a sort of smaller side, maybe that's a cool thing to invest in in 2022. If you can stretch it, we all have these New Year's goals and these New Year's resolutions. 
and having somebody else to help with that is only going to be of assistance to you. And you know I'm not pimping you out because I ain't no one's personal trainer. I get a lot of people ask me that as well. Simon, do you do any personal training? I'm like, you don't want me as a, <laughs> as a personal trainer. You'd be like, you don't have any qualifications. All you've got is experience, which you can't buy to be fair, and maybe one day I will. Maybe I'll one day I'll change my mind, but right now I'm not. And that's something that I plan to do too. Obviously right now recovering from surgery, uh, we're around about two weeks in, so the badness has come, <laughs> you know. You start noticing that you're not as, uh, well, muscular, really. You're not as lean, not necessarily lean, but you're not as shapely as, as, as I was, obviously, because I haven't trained, I haven't done anything. I just sat on my ass for two weeks as I recover, because I have a big wound in the middle of my chest that you can't muck around with. Don't really want my guts to roll out on the floor, which is not a thing, but I think come 2022, I wasn't necessarily happy with the shape I've been in all year. I think coming out the other end of the pandemic, and it could be me again doing that thing, looking at my own pictures and going, oh, I look crap, I look crap. I'm not saying it like it you know, depressed me or anything, but I, I feel like I have been in better shape, especially before the, the crazy pandemic. And I would like to get back there because I know what I can achieve. And while I haven't had a personal trainer for years, I feel like it'd be more effective, be more beneficial, be more productive if I do get one on board. So I think that's my plan. Haven't chosen anyone as of yet. Gonna wait until we get through the crazy Christmas and New Year period to have a look, but I'm quite excited about it. I mean, I am because, you know, they'll introduce potentially a new program, potentially a new diet, maybe come up with things that I've never heard before, which is, you know, I love bodybuilding, right? I love fitness. So any time somebody has a new idea, as long as I have a good relationship with them and I've built up the trust in them, that to me is like going to a party. I prefer that to Christmas Day, <laughs> to tie into something topical. Nothing is more exciting to me than going to a gym with something I've never done before or going around the country and going to a new gym. Going to a new gym is like the best thing ever. And yes, as always, I'm not the authority on this. This is just what I have found through my experience that I just mentioned. And I don't think that it's beneficial to you to you know, do a 180 on everything, especially when you already know it's gonna take some time. Like, if getting ripped took two weeks, then sure, man, go crazy, but it doesn't. You know, it can take eight, 12, 16, 20 weeks, you know, depending on, on who you are and what kind, of, uh, what kind of physique you have. So just be kind to yourself, make incremental changes, see how you get, be fair to your brain, don't go and try to go too crazy. But if you want my more YouTube, don't sit on the fence answer, absolutely do not start dropping your lifts and absolutely do not start all of a sudden doing high reps you're already doing high reps that's fine keep to it but keep your training as similar as you can and then you know use the bulk to change up your program because the best not even a bulk whatever you're doing but if you're not trying to get super duper lean and you know you've got some excess fat you can play around with sometimes it can be a little bit of a protector too so i've answered it now so the lovely folk that message me on instagram and twitter sometimes more so instagram you're gonna get this video, which is creepy, because it looks like me walking around in the dark as people pass me thinking, who the hell is this guy about to do a crime to? And that ain't even proper English. I do appreciate you watching as always though, so please do like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Can I do this and walk? We'll find out. Uh, Grillamine.com forward slash Simon, as I go under this weird Batmobile cave. If you are watching this on the day it goes live, go there right now, use code Simon, and you'll get a bunch of money off Gorilla Mode Nitric in the two new flavors which is Volcanic Burst and Jungle Juice. Jungle Juice, The Rock's favorite flavor. Also, Greg Dissett's Power 13 Cookbook. Cool thing to get in 2022. If you want a nice diet that's also healthy, I'm on Cameo. If you've got a Christmas, New Year, birthday message, whatever it may be, patreon.com forward slash Simon316 if you want to support me that way. Simon of the Big Cartel.com for merch. I'm trying to sell through all of that at the moment. So use the code Xmas to get 10% off up to Xmas. Leave a comment, do all that stuff, engage with the video, and just have a good day. More than anything, have a good day, enjoy your training, be happy, be positive, and I'll speak to you again soon.